us. Now, there is a way to keep yourself real across every single thing in social media. I mean, right. when, when people started sitting in there, when, you know, when Facebook started to hit big and people socialized were basically sitting on a laptop in their basement just, and they said they have 5,000 friends, people said, well, that's going to ruin social mores, it's going to ruin social values and all this and that. No, it's a tool. It all comes down to how you use it. That's all it is. I mean, right. there's, there's nothing inherently wrong with any of this. We talk about so many different things on the Digital Entrepreneur Show, so many different platforms, the websites, the social media, uh, video, use of video, LinkedIn, all of these things. They are tools. If you keep yourself ingrained as part of your message, you're going to be okay. Okay. So great, great, great final thoughts, Steve. Okay. So, and guys, please share this out. If you have a chance, give us those emotions. Let us know that you're there, that you're watching. And also don't forget, leave comments. If you have any questions, any concerns, thank you, Gord. Thank you, Tim. Uh, uh, thank you, Aaron, for liking the show. I appreciate that. Um, let us know about, you know, any questions or concerns you may have about the show because we are listening. Okay, let's get to episode four. Episode four of the Digital Entrepreneur Show just launched yesterday. It should be going up on iTunes. Thank you, Adam, for the like. It should be going up on iTunes very, very shortly. Uh, and it's on our YouTube channel now. If you go to our page, I've linked the page in the description of this uh, broadcast, you can find all of the links to everything on the pinned comment. Make sure that you go check those out. Uh, episode four, episode four, platforms and pivoting on certain platforms. You know, I got to say, it was really interesting discussing this on the show and, uh, you know, talking about different platforms because I think a lot of people, Steve, you know, have a hard time understanding where do I begin because this is a big, big community, huge environment. Yeah. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts, a lot of different platforms, a lot of new shiny toys coming out every week. Um, I, I, I really thought this was a really important show. Uh, what were your thoughts, Steve, on how we conducted the show, what the show was all about? And then we got another question from our audience here from Gord, a great question about episode four. Sure. What, how, how did, how, anything you want to add about episode four, uh, Steve? Yeah, one of the biggest reasons I'm part of the show is because, like you said, every week there's something new and shiny that everybody says, oh, you've got to be on this. If you did a search, I'd be willing to bet if you went on Google and you researched the top 40 social media sites I need to be on for my business, they're going to come up with at least 40. Now, here's what you got to do. First off, breathe. Secondly... <laughs> Talk to your clients. Talk to people who are in your target audience. See what they're using. Yep. And see what types of conversations they're having there. I mean, there are certain things, you know, that, that don't really happen on certain social media um, outlets, uh, whether you're restricted by size like Twitter or, you know, different things like that. Find out where the people are that you want to talk to. Start there. Start yeah. simply. Start building an audience. If it's Facebook, great. I do a ton of stuff on Facebook. So I started putting out messages on a daily basis that just tell the world what I'm all about. Yeah. That's where I started. Then I went to LinkedIn. Then I went to YouTube. I, I use Twitter on occasion. Um, I built WordPress sites. I've got my blogs out there as well, but started very, very small because it is so overwhelming when you when you first start or when you say, okay, I'm going to be on social media. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that dun, dun, right. dun, dun, dun. Right. And it's, it's very overwhelming and you can get, you can slam on your brakes uh, out of fear or, or just overwhelm. I'm, I'm a person who gets overwhelmed easily. Yeah. And if I've got too much going on and I'm not quite sure what to do, I tend to do nothing and that's yeah. even worse. Yeah. So just pick one of the, and that's why we do the show the way we do. We start off with a couple of ideas. It grows throughout the show. And all of a sudden before we're, we realize it, we're done. But what I was telling Tim yesterday offline was I actually, when the shows get released, I'll sit there with a pen and paper and actually watch the show Yeah. and take a couple of notes of ideas. And he goes, weren't you there? <laughs> 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 During the recording of the show, really. I said, <laughs> I said really. yeah, but, uh, but when, I'm, when I'm a co-host, I'm in a different mindset. When I'm yeah. just an entrepreneur at my desk, yeah. I sit back and listen to the conversations and I start picking up these little nuggets and say, okay, if I, I'm doing this this way, if I just add this to it, it shifts that little bit. Yeah. And over time, I mean, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. You're not going to go viral. every. If you start on social media and say, I want my business to go viral, good luck with that. I've been very fortunate to have a couple of things go actually go viral. It took me nine years to get a Facebook post to go viral. But when it did, it reached 
4.1 million people in 11 days. Yeah. And it tripled my following on my Facebook speaker page. Now, again, it took nine years yeah. of steady putting it out there, staying consistent, staying in integrity. And then all of a sudden, boom, it tripled in 11 days. And it's, it's been growing steadily since, but it's every day being out there in the social media world on a platform that works for me. That's, that's great. Well said. Well said, Steve. I want to get to a, a question from our audience and, and watch the show, everybody. Go watch the show right now because we go way into detail uh, about what platforms really are optimized for you, but more importantly, for your audience because that you, you're nothing. A business is nothing without their audience. And when I say audience, I mean that inclusively, right? If your audience is our customers, patients, followers, subscribers, clients, what have you, uh, our show really covers that really well. You got to go check it out. Gord asks, in episode four, you talked about pivoting and adapting. How do you just let go if something didn't work? I can see it being easy to quit. That said, it's character building if you preserve. Any thoughts on that, Steve? Yeah, it can be really easy to quit. Then all of a sudden you have that what if. What if I was that close? And, we, and we've discussed this, and, and I believe we have it in, in a show coming up. What if I was that close? Right. What I've tended to do over the years is I may pivot away from something, but I won't go back and demolish the roots of what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, some people will go cancel that account. They'll just delete it as though it never existed. Yeah. Uh, if you really want that to happen, I mean, I, I used to have stand-up comedy videos out there on YouTube. They're gone. I had 13 videos that had a total of 75 and a half thousand views. They're gone because I didn't want that message out there representing me anymore because I am a professional speaker and I couldn't risk somebody in the corporate world seeing the comedy club version of me. So those are gone. But right. otherwise, right. I've got some of my early writings that yeah. may not have been great and, and I may have shifted a bit from where I started, but they're still out there because they still pretty much represent my message. Right. It's not like tearing, you know, getting this close to finishing a model and, and having one wheel left to put on and then destroying the whole dang thing. Yeah. It's, it's not like that. It's, it's okay. I'll pivot away, but I'll, I'll leave that trace there of me because that's, yeah. that's how I got here. Part of it is, is just as a reminder of, to me of how far things have come. And the weird part is I've gone back to things before that I thought I was stuck on or frustrated with or, or didn't represent me anymore and realized all it needed was something that I learned six months after. I've gone back and revitalized stuff. Yeah. And it's, and it's become a pretty significant part of uh, my marketing. Yeah. I mean, this is an interesting question that Gord asks. And I think that a lot of people can get a lot out of the, the, the types of things that we're talking about here, because I have a perfect, just really concrete example of what, you know, our show is all about episode four and what Gord's asking. And that is that, you know, I, and, and this is not something I'm happy about, but we can't be, you know, we can't be so romantic about it and we can't be so um, attached, right. To certain mm -hmm. platforms. I love Snapchat. I still do. However, I've noticed that just quite naturally, my audience has been moving over to Instagram. So a lot of my audience, people in my specific niche have really been upping their engagement and conversing, interacting, talking to one another, consuming content more so on Instagram lately. Now I'm not saying that Snapchat is done by no stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but I have been, I don't want to say neglecting Snapchat, but I just find that I've been producing more content on Instagram because that's where my audience is. So when right. it comes to pivoting and adapting, I think this happens with everybody. You see a lot of brick and mortars that are going out of business. And we talked about this on our show on episode four specifically. You got to watch episode four. There's some cool stuff. I just pinned the YouTube uh, link to our show if you want to watch it and hear it. Again, you can go on SoundCloud and iTunes and please subscribe. Write a review. That would really, really be awesome if you can write a review because Apple really pushes reviews on there. Here's my entrepreneurial thing, the marketing guy coming out. But uh, th that would be awesome. We'd really appreciate that. It's not about, it's not about being coming too attached to any one platform. I think that's something that we, we didn't maybe stress as much in the show. And this is what I love about going live after the show is that, you know, again, it's not really up to you. You got to check your ego at the door. You got to check your sort of, um, dream, fantasy, desire. I want to stay here. This is my domain. I love it here. That's fine that you love it there, but where is your audience? Where are your customers? Where are your clients? Mm -hmm. That's 
if that doesn't, if that's not the commandant of your aircraft carrier, if that's not the captain of your boat is your audience, then you're just, you're just, you're definitely steering in the wrong direction and your boat, you're, you're going to sink. You're basically your business as a digital business, especially a digital business is going to sink. But I think that same concept applies, you know, on a macro level as well. Um, Gord says, I appreciate the courage you have, Steve, to be executing on such a diverse body of work. Just having the mindset that doing multiple things for income is a challenge for some old school types. Yeah. But here's the cool thing, Gord, is the opportunities are boundless. The opportunities are boundless. I just love it. I wish to God I was in my 20s again and didn't have so many other attachments and didn't have like you know, a, a lot of bills and mortgage payments that are just piling up, piling up every single month. Um, I would, I would really have, I think I'd risk even more. I think I'd risk even more in this digital ecosphere that we're living in. So the, the opportunities and what I love about our generation, Steve, and the boomers and what have you is that we are sitting on, please, everybody listening and watching, we are sitting on treasure troves of, knowledge and ex experience that is sitting there collecting rust put it out there create a course create a coaching group create a mastermind create a online business that monetizes your expertise your knowledge and i think you will achieve it because we have a great work ethic you will achieve success i really really strongly believe that um another thing that we talked about on episode four uh, Steve, is we talked about not only what platforms, but also what small businesses can do, which I think is so interesting. Yeah, Gord, I'm so excited for the opportunities ahead. I just need to double down efforts. Absolutely, Gord. You know, we talked about small business. A lot of these, you know, digital entrepreneur type uh, advice or interview type shows usually talk about scaling really large and scaling for large companies and companies that are already putting in a lot of revenue, especially ad revenue into radio, print, and TV. But we talked a lot about small business. We talked about Joe, the AC guy. <laughs> I think he's a reoccurring. We need to have talk about merch. We yeah, have we're going to have to come up with a guy that just says, I'm Joe, the AC guy from the I'm Digital Joe, the Entrepreneur AC Show. Guy. Hey, catch Joe, the every, plumber. <laughs> yeah. Joe, the Joe plumber. Say, got catch famous. me every Tuesday and Friday for brand new episodes at 3 p.m. Eastern. And oh, yeah. 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 yeah I you mean, know, I think, I think that, that the digital media world, I, you know, it's, it's like you almost become a ninja because so many of the traditional media, the print, the radio, the television are, are struggling these days. And, and I see why, because people are, you know, recording shows and fast forwarding through the commercials. Okay. That's a strike. Yeah. I mean, I was in the media for 10 years, believe me, yeah. I know. And, and my, my wife is in the newspaper, uh, in the digital pub, uh, digital and traditional publishing industry in the newspaper world. And she sees it going, you know, certain ways as well. It's a lot different. You can come in, even if you're just a local business, like say Joe, the, the air conditioning guy. <laughs> there he is. Now, he doesn't need to spread his message all the way around the world, but using social media for free, yeah. plus whatever signage he has on his vehicle, he can saturate and share his knowledge within his geographic community of the area he covers for free. Yeah. But it again, it becomes some people say, well, I'm always out working. I don't have time for this. Now that's when you maybe take a couple of hours on a weekend or whenever you're not working and you use, I use the Facebook scheduler at the beginning of every single month. And I schedule out the motivational firewood quote, which is a, a, a quote, a picture and a call to action. I spend about an hour and a half and I pre-program the entire month. Now I'm on Facebook every day anyway, putting in other things. Right. It takes me an hour and a half to schedule a month's worth of information. It's already out there and is absolutely free. Some other people use Hootsuite or programs like that to schedule their social media, but it costs me nothing. Yep. And it keeps me out there in the world on a regular scheduled basis. And it's so important to keep that going. It costs you nothing to do. I mean, you know, it's teaching, crazy. I, 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 it's, it's crazy. Guys, everybody watching and listening, I love, I love the way you said that, Steve. Uh, Tim, Steve, who are you again? <laughs> do I have to wear a name tag now? You know, this is, you know, I used to hate it when I was a kid. <laughs> Hello, my name is Gamlin. I used to, <laughs> we should all have name tags. That'd be great. No, we shouldn't. I used to, <laughs> 
I used to it's, hate it's it. It's bad enough I finally came in the studio with a different shirt. I mean, Tim said yesterday, <laughs> Steve, you wore the same damn shirt for every show. I'm like, well, it hangs on a hanger here I thought in the you recording studio. In that shirt. <laughs> no, no, it, it never leaves the studio. It never so leaves the I studio. put on a new shirt and you call me Tim. So there we go. I'm so sorry. So no, but Steve, <laughs> I used to hate it when my dad, you know, would always call me my brother's name. My brother's name was Mark. He'd like, Mark, yeah. dad, it's Joe, Steve, Peter. Yeah. So uh, you, now the I, other guy. I think it's just I think it's just getting older. My brain is just kind of oozing uh, in all different directions. It's melting anyway, and I, just, I think yeah. it just happens with age. But I love what you said, Steve, because uh, honestly, this. Uh, let me just give you a perfect example. My consulting business right now is thriving. I'm so excited, mm -hmm. so pumped, and it's all digital. It's all online. Okay, I literally get up. I have my coffee. I've got my appointments all lined up that they use through Google Calendar. I've got my business PayPal account. I've got everything scheduled nicely. I come upstairs into my studio and I plug in my video conferencing tool. I meet with my clients. The transactions are made, and literally I can be in my, I mean, let's, let's just be honest. I can be in my boxer shorts. It's phenomenal for somebody Thanks for who, the visual <laughs> TMI TMI. They're cute boxers, by the way, maybe they're boxer uh, briefs. Lovely. Don't, don't get, don't, don't be, don't. Yeah. Well, depending on how many viewers right now, put in the, in the boxes below, they're stand all gone. Up, Nez. Yeah, no. they're all gone. They're all gone. <laughs> But, but, but in, in, in all honesty, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. The technology yeah. has created this ability to reach. I mean, I'm not only am I uh, meeting with and, and working and thriving in my consulting business, but I'm making connections as Steve, as we talked about in this show, you talked about at the top of the hour, making connections. I'm communicating. I'm providing value. We're talking about life. We're talking about our businesses. We're talking about our goals. We're talking about our kids, our family. It's helping me get more comfortable in front of a camera. Every single time I do it, I'm learning. Every mm -hmm. single time I'm do it, I do it, I'm learning. I'm getting better. I'm crafting. Okay. I'm not in the mindset of I'm an expert. I don't like that right. mindset. I don't even want to, I don't ever, even no. if I become the grand heavyweight champion of live video or the grand heavyweight champion of consulting or whatever, I never want that title. And this isn't just a reverse ego trip. I literally know I'm so understanding of who I am. I'm so aware that if I believe in that, I will plateau and I will fall. That if I keep my, myself hungry and I keep myself in that beginner mind, which is another reason why I love this show, is Steve and Tim, the egos are checked at the door. We all respect each other. We all respect the fact that everything that we provide is substantive and it's backed up with evidence. It's backed up with experience, you know? And th there's just, there, there's such a great energy on the show. I really want, it's a pin comment, guys. I really want you to go watch the show. But the last thing I want to leave with, and then I'm going to have Steve in the show, the last thing I want to leave with is do not, do not think that this is something that is out of your reach. If this bozo right here can do it, okay, I'm pointing at me, not Steve. Steve's not a bozo. He's a clown. That bozo over there. <laughs> if this bozo can actually build, you know, a, and grow and scale a business in this digital universe that we're living in, trust me. I know this sounds bumper stickery. Trust me with every molecule in my being you can too. And our mm -hmm. show helps you chart your course. You can learn from our mistakes. We give substantive practical tools. That's what I love about it. That's the only reason I put my name attached to it is these two guys. These two guys, my name can be attached to anything they do any day of the week. Steve and Tim are phenomenal. And I just love being under their wings, really. I mean, I'm learning. With every show, I'm learning. I mean, I swear to God, I'm not, this is not uh, uh, you know, a stroke. I'm literally learning from these two guys every single show. Gord says, uh, you, you all need to wear a, a, a show branded shirt. There's a guy whose company name is marketing and underwear. <laughs> Eternal learning. We can all learn from each other. Absolutely. Gord, Steve, last thoughts before yeah, we yeah. go off the air. What's your last thoughts about episode four? And then I'm going to talk about episode five, which mm -hmm. has a special guest. Go ahead. Yes, it does. Uh, one of the things you touched on when you, when you started your last uh, segment there was talking about how you're able to do your scheduling and everything for your consulting business and also take payments. Easy, now, accessible. One of the scariest things when I first started doing this was how am I going to get people to pay for this? I've had some very bad experiences with exactly. credit card processing companies in the past. Yeah. And somebody said, have you ever heard of PayPal? And I checked it out. I mean, if you, I you love build it. the simplest website, you have these little embeddable codes, congratulations, oh, tied it. to a bank account, you are an online 
uh, you know, connector and transfer of money. It is so simple. Invoices I, have, I too. still have people calling me up. Hi, we'd like to talk to you about your credit card services. I use PayPal. Oh, I think we can save you money. I said, good. Here's my website. Go to my website, buy 10,000 copies of, of my book. Then you tell me how much extra you paid. I go, and if after that you're cheaper, I'll go with you. Click. Ooh, I up. love that. I love and that. I, I That's say, good. you know, what? PayPal is it, my whole thing now. Some people say they're the fastest, they're the best of this. You know what? PayPal for me, it just covers everything I need to do. Yeah. So please don't be overwhelmed, but please don't be pressured out there by the by the big tactics that some people are using. There is a tool to do everything you need to do. I recently built a WordPress website to deliver my vision board success program. Now, right. first off, I had no idea how to even create a digital program. I was still spending 25 bucks at Staples to print out all the forms, putting them in a binder and taking an hour to mail them to people. <laughs> that's, that's what I love, that Midwest work for, ethic. Oh my God. It's, I love now that. it's there forever. And I learned, and, and Tim coached me through the building of the, of the site, I learned, he's, Tim says, Steve, every question you've got, somebody had before and somebody who develops programs thought of an app or a widget or a plugin or something. Right. Literally anything you need to do with your business is out there. You just need to learn. And my whole part of being on the show, and I absolutely love being a part of the show, is that every episode we're going to trickle a couple of knowledge nuggets to you that you can tank and run. Right. Now, last week uh, down in the Boston area, Tony Robbins had one of his big day long events. And I've been to these before, so I can say this and I'm in the industry, so I can also say it. These events are basically a hype you up, get you to believe in yourself that you're going to change your entire life right now. And by the way, on the way out, bring your credit card because you're going to buy all our crap. Yeah. A ton of knowledge in one day is not going to change your life. My whole purpose for being here is to just trickle every episode. If I can give you a little bit of something, you can say, well, I'm over here. I just need to get there. That, boom, get yeah. there. That's why I'm part of this show. We're not here to sell anything. We don't use any slimy sales techniques. We're just here to say, and, and you want to talk where experience comes from? Screwing up. Yeah. We sit here and we compare scars. Like, hey, Steve, that's a pretty nifty scar you got there. Oh, yeah, that was the time I tried to build the website. And we talk <laughs> about what we've learned. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, when I'm 90 years old, I, I've screwed up in every way you can imagine. Yes. But I fixed it all. And for those people wondering, well, what am I going to talk about in the digital world? Think of any lesson that life has taught you in whatever your subject matter is. That's where you start. It's that easy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, that's perfectly said. And, and, and if I can just kind of add to that, you know, Steve, it's, it's interesting because <clears throat> I remember, you know, back in the day when I first started my kind of coaching consulting business, you know, I, I, you know, I just, I made a crap ton of mistakes. I mean, I didn't even have invoices back then. I would just literally send my PayPal email link, you know, to their email. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it, but, but, Here's the thing is you learn, you grow. Okay, that didn't work. I mean, we are, human beings are incredibly, we, do, we don't give ourselves enough credit. We're incredibly adaptive and flexible if we just let it happen. Yep. And I remember being severely depressed early on when I created my digital business that I, I was like, gosh, you know, maybe this is a, I'm a complete fraud. You have those thoughts, you know? I mean, this is what oh, my yeah. YouTube channel is all about is mindset. Those happen. And, and Mr. Motivational Firewood, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you have those doubts, you have that gloom, that cloud starts to form in your mental sky. And you think, what, what I'm never going to, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe all those doubts and fears. Believe me, if you have that, everybody watching, listening on the replay and watching this and listening, it's, it's, it's natural. It's natural. Don't think that that means anything. Don't make a big deal out of that. The failures are incessant. You be more incessant and you will yep. win. Yep. The failures are going to be days you feel like the biggest idiot on the planet. And, and here's the thing. If I feel like that every day. People, <laughs> hey, you know, with their, there are days we all do. Believe me. Yeah. Believe me. I've been speaking for 13 years and people say, well, why have I only heard you for the, of you for the past three years? I go, well, apparently for 10 years, I really sucked. Beautiful. But I wasn't getting my message out there. Here's the thing. If you feel like the biggest idiot in the world right now, first off, if you've got other people telling you you are, but you believe in your stuff, maybe you're asking the wrong people to check out your stuff. Oh, God, I what love that. What you need to do is reach out to people who are doing what you wish you could do at the level you wish you could do it. And in the digital media world, they are out there. They put together YouTube tutorials. They write 
articles. They have social media accounts. Go where these people are that you aspire to be like. They're dropping nuggets all day long. That's why we created the show, because we wanted to reach and give back to share what we've learned for other people. It's free. Nobody paid to be here. We're not, you know, we're not here to sell you any programs or we're not or sponsored. We have no sponsors, we're, zero right now, sponsors. No. Unless no, you well, want to, let us know. <laughs> we, we probably offended the few that that had offered. Yeah, right they're now. they're all gone. You know, I I I Just wanted <laughs> I wanted this to be a pure show. Coca Cola reached out to me, and so did Samsung and Apple. I said no. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, I love what you said there, uh, Steve. Is and gosh, you know, the two of us being in the mindset sort of, you know, uh, genre of, of really trying to be inspirational and motivational in, in nature um, and bringing our experiences there. I think the two of us might need to do a, a separate kind of live mindset live show because that would be really cool. Because I, I think everything, all your, your business, your personal, your professional life, all hinges on your mindset and all yep. hinges on how you are cognizant and aware of who you are and what you bring to the table and how you can effectively convey that. So uh, I think everything that we talk about can be really relegated under that umbrella. One thing that I wanted to say before we get out of here, uh, and, and I think this has been an awesome show. Thank you, Steve, uh, for, for, yeah, for being on here. And I, I just love it. And I love working with you two guys again. And, I, and if I haven't said it before, I want to say this live and in front of everybody. I am honored, Steve. I am honored to be a part of the show with you and Tim. I truly feel privileged. I truly feel like you two guys are really the value bombs of the group. And I love just listening to you guys and learning from you guys. I truly mean that. I am, I I am, I am the, uh, the extra weight of the show. Steve and Tim, they bring it. They just absolutely crush it. Uh, and so I want to just say live here in front of everybody, thank you so much, sir, because it's been, it's been a real learning experience for me. I hope everybody recorded that and just bombs your social media channels with it at Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to. I'm going to. There you go. Uh, so before we get out of here, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you, all you replay viewers. I really appreciate it. Again, before I plug the next show... Leave your comments, leave your thoughts, leave your questions. What did you think of episode four? What worked? What didn't work? What did you feel you could possibly use some more information about? Leave that in the comments below. Make sure that you uh, tell us, let us know, because we come back and we check all of these. I promise you we will, and we will respond, and we want to make this show better. We want to better serve you guys, and the only way to better serve you guys is to hear directly from the horse's mouth. So we want to know what's working and what's not. Okay. We would really appreciate that. Now, episode five is a big one, ladies and gentlemen. Episode five is going to be launching on Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Released hot off the presses, we have got a very, very special guest. And I'm going to let Steve talk a little bit about who that special guest is in our very rare, if I may add, very rare. There it is. <laughs> Very rare, if I may add, interview series. We don't do, this is not an interview show, uh, right. even though it seems that way. This is not an interview show. This is three entrepreneurs bringing their collective 60 years, over 60 years of experience in the business world, bringing that to you guys and sharing what you can learn from that and teaching you how to really scale and grow your online business. We don't do interviews, but this was something special. Steve, do you want to take it away? Yeah, this Friday's show is going to feature Brian G. Johnson, who just released the book Tube Ritual Volume 1. Now, the reason we have Brian on here is Brian decided to take on a little experiment in the digital media world. He decided to start a YouTube channel with zero subscribers, start it stone cold from the beginning, and within a year, get at least 10,000 subscribers to the channel, and the beauty of it is, we all drifted into Brian's group, Tube Ritual, right about the time, or I did. I was one of the very first members of this group. I spent that year watching Brian from the sidelines, cheering him on, and also learning a ton of information that has helped my channel big time, every single phase of my channel. So we're going to have Brian on with us this Friday. It's going to be debuting at noon Pacific. That is 3 p.m. here on the East Coast, where I am at. And uh, we hope that you will be there watching the show. There's a lot of stuff going on in that episode. So bring your pen and paper, take some notes. And uh, of course, we have the usual humor and energy there as well, because that's, you can't do anything without that. 
And the book launches, and the book launches on the 17th. Am I correct in that, uh, Steve? I Am I wrong? No. Yeah. yeah, I think it starts, I think it, I think it launches on the 17th. And, uh, you know, uh, Brian G. Johnson is going to be on the show and really busting some knowledge on how you can really grow your YouTube channel. The book is all about how he went from zero to 10,000 subscribers in under a year and how he did it systematically. So I've, I've just got my copy of the book. When did you get yours, Steve? Did you get yours before me? I want to know if I'm more special I, than you. I got mine about a week ago. So I, oh, I got you it bastard. A, a couple of days before you did. You got it a couple of days. Okay. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. I got mine. I got mine just literally four or five days ago. I can't remember, nice. but uh, I've been, I've been really impressed with what I've yeah. seen so far. Um, it's it's a different book, isn't it? It's really a different book. It is. And Brian's a very genuine, creative, uh, very real. Uh, Brian's an emotional dude. I mean, he is he's not one of these people who has this masterminded schematic only. His heart and soul go into everything he does, and that includes not only his videos, but also his book. And it's it's definitely a great read. I've already put a video testimonial up on Amazon, five stars. So, uh, you know, get out there, check it out. It's going to be available very soon. Just stay tuned to Amazon and look up Brian G. Johnson. Okay, guys. Thank you so much again for watching. Thank you, Gord. Thank you, everybody who was watching during the live broadcast. Thank you, everybody on the replay. We really, really appreciate it. Again, leave those comments, leave those thoughts, leave any kind of uh, concerns you may have, any topics that you think that, Steve, Tim, and myself should broach on the Digital Entrepreneur Show. We are producing uh, every single week. We are trying to stay up to date, state of the art, current on the hottest topics, hottest new tips, strategies, tactics to optimize and grow and scale your digital business. And we are bringing it. And we're so excited to have you guys with us. So don't forget this Friday, we're launching our episode five. Uh, the pin comment is here on this broadcast, on this thread. Uh, also, if you go to our business page, the digital, if you just Google the Digital Entrepreneur Show, lo, all of our links should show up. That's the easy route. But if you're watching this from our page, you'll see the pin comment. You'll also see there's a pin post with all the links to all of our different channels, our YouTube channels, SoundCloud, iTunes, everything. And this is Professor Nez on behalf of myself. And Mr. Steve Gamlin, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys Friday. Don't forget, go watch the show on Friday. You're going to love it. Leave those comments. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. See you.